sophomore year French class. Our French teacher. Je pense un peu aussi. Je m'appelle Camille. That was great. <laughs> I'm Camille, and I have an obsession. I stay up late at night reading cookbooks. I imagine that the author is my best friend, who I cook with and ask a million questions. And this show is my chance to do that in real life. We're going into the kitchen to get to know the people behind my favorite cookbooks to talk life, talk food, and cook from their book. Sunday morning at the studio with Stephanie Izard. Wait, Stephanie. Stephanie Izard is focused, she's fun, and she's legit. So we're gonna make one of my fave recipes from your new book, Gather and Graze, which I love. Thank you. Because I really like to gather and graze. We had all of these different ideas, and when Gather and Graze came up, we thought, well, that's perfect, because I love gathering with my friends and grazing on a bunch of different foods, and that's yeah. kind of what the book is all about. We're gonna make the smoked salmon toast. I feel like this is a flavor combination that I've really never seen before with the blackberries black and the salmon and the spiciness of the vinaigrette. Stephanie, since it's Sunday, I thought it might be a good time to make us my special hangover juice. Oh, nice, yes. I don't know if you need it. <laughs> Usually, yes. OJ, pineapple juice, coconut water, a little ginger, and la croix. We have serious cooking to do, do. today. Good thing that we're just having la croix. Cheers. Cheers. Where do we begin? I think we're gonna start with the bread, which you might think is one of the simplest parts. Mm -hmm. I am like the worst at slicing baguettes, which is so embarrassing because it's such an easy task. This baguette is like nice and crunchy. It's definitely not necessarily baked this morning, and it, that's <laughs> fine. So we're just lining up our angle. But the next part is cooking it low and slow in the pan and making sure to use a decent amount of butter. Okay. <laughs> Let's see, I'm I curious like, what that means to you I and what like it means to me. I the butter too yeah, much. Like, is good. that good? Yeah, okay. I think that's good. We might add more when we flip it. It's like <laughs> if you're gonna go with butter, just go for just it. Just go for you know? it. I'm gonna like slyly put in more butter while, while, while nobody's well, looking. I'm not looking. <laughs> totally didn't see that. Like that is so delicious. Oh my gosh, that looks amazing. Okay, I just recently had my first mandolin accident, so I'm gonna be really to be careful, careful shaping this fennel. Yeah. Okay, so core the fennel. Leave it in there, because it's almost like nature's way of holding the fennel together oh. to make shaving it a lot easier. Shave down to the core, and then kind of just angle it and shave around it. Okay. Look at you, you're a master at the mandolin. Okay, yeah. thanks. So I kind of expected Stephanie to come in and be like all business. She works in a professional kitchen every day. I've seen her on Iron Chef where she is like totally taking care of business. So I thought it was gonna be kind of a more intense cook session, but it was evident really from the start that this girl wants to have a good time. Some people have moved down here from Chicago. I was like, oh, you're the smart ones. I mean, it is, <laughs> I love Chicago, but especially being here, I. Now, like, the weather is so beautiful. Yeah. But the genuine kindness of people here, it reminds me of yeah. Chicago. So you have little goat, girl and the goat. And then you and duck, duck, goat. What's the concept of duck, duck, goat? Duck, duck, goat is Chinese. My other two restaurants do flavors from all over, but all different regions of China. I mean, yeah. there's such a vast amount of different flavors and techniques throughout the country. So we went to China for a couple weeks. Lazy Susans are a real thing in China. Oh my god! You sit around a big table with a lot of people and you order just a ridiculous amount of food and you sit there for a couple of hours and just hang out and just enjoy and then, you know, take over the leftovers. That's the Americans yeah. with their leftover oh Chinese in the fridge is very normal. <laughs> Okay, so I'd love to hear more about, like, when did you start cooking? Did you love to cook growing up, or did you pick it up later in life? I always think that chefs either had a mom who was, or grew up in a household where food was a big thing and their mm -hmm. mom was an amazing cook, or the opposite, where they ended up having to fend for themselves and cook. Right. And I'm happy to say that I grew up in a household with a mom who was an amazing cook. Okay. We actually used to plan our menus. I feel like meal planning is so in now, like your mom was ahead of her time. It's true, I know. <laughs> but I found my way into the restaurant industry in college, and I found myself at the Olive Garden. Uh, that salad and bread combo. I know. Like, <laughs> I would, Someone... if you put that in front of me right now, I would eat it all. Oh, that should be good, yeah. We've got our smoked salmon cream cheese that we just blended together. Okay, so you went to culinary school, and then, while I was in culinary school, I actually got jobs in a couple different kitchens, kind of figuring out what I liked about certain restaurants and what I didn't like, so I could find the places that were 
good for me. I worked with one chef that used to scream at us all the time and I thought, I do not want to be that. Right. For us, it's been about making an environment that's inviting for cooks to work in. So I worked at a few different places in Arizona and then I found my way back to Chicago. Okay, I feel like this quote from the intro really sums up Stephanie's approach to cooking and kind of why she wrote this cookbook in the first place. I've literally made it my business to make sure people are relaxed and enjoying themselves. And this book is my way of helping you take a little piece of that enjoyment home with you. Stephanie was the first female to win Top Chef, which is was awesome. so cool. I mean, it just like makes me smile even thinking about it. Would you say that it was a fun process or a grueling <laughs> process or a combination of both? A little bit of both. I think over the years I've kind of blocked out the grueling parts, but what they do on that show is they, they definitely want to create a high stress environment, mm -hmm. not by yelling at us, yeah. um, like in real kitchens, but just by not telling you what's going to happen so you never know what to expect. Right. I mean, even in the morning, they didn't they never told us what time to be awake or what time they were going to come and pick us up. So I was that close enough. Crazy. It was crazy. So good. It's so savory, and the, I mean, you hear the crunch when we bite mm. that bread. That's what kind of makes it so delicious. So do you need to use that butter? Okay. This is gonna be my new Sunday fun day signature. Oh, nice. I love it. I love the idea of grazing. I think so often people are intimidated about the idea of preparing this multi-course meal for their guests, and Stephanie totally debunks that. She just shows how fun it is to have people into your home and get to try all different kinds of fun little bites. I'm definitely with Stephanie on the idea of grazing needs to be a thing at parties. Oh, I like this one. <laughs> what is the worst dish you've ever made? This is not in the restaurant, but this is in my house. Okay. When we first moved into our house, we went and bought a big steak. Like we spent like 60 bucks on this steak. Right. My husband's like, let me go throw it on the grill. I was like, no, no, I'm the chef. Like, let me throw it on the grill. <laughs> so I go put it on the grill. I go inside and I'm like cooking some asparagus on the stove, which a new stove that worked better than I thought. So I burned the asparagus, go back outside. The whole grill is like on fire. Oh, no. And we've ended up with this big, it's basically a black and blue, but in the worst way, very expensive steak. So we had to so carve sad. off all of the char and kind of find a little piece inside that we could still cook off and eat. What's your go-to source for great recipes besides your own cookbook, of course? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just the internet. I like mm -hmm. reading about foods from around the world, so it's not necessarily chef's websites. Mm -hmm. It's more so just websites written by people from those countries. A lot of people that have moved to the U.S. like to celebrate their heritage and kind of write about their yeah. cultures. But I end up on websites that are mostly focused on different cultures. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm sure it, like there are ideas that we would never just naturally think of in America for like ways to put flavors together. Yeah. Ooh. What's one ingredient that you hate? I think smelt. The reason I like them is because you leave the bones in. So there's tiny little bones mm, in these tiny little fish. Like crunch, crunch, crunch. We went to a restaurant and our friend was like, who is the chef? He's like, do you like smelt? And you're just like, yeah, you know, just trying to, yeah, that sounds great. And he sent out a giant bowl of fried smelt and my husband and I were like, oh, crap, we don't want to not eat this. Yeah. So we took like, we each took one bite and then we we're like, I don't like this. Right. So we're trying to like hide it under napkins and like hide it under other plates. And like we spent the whole meal really stressed Hiding about trying smelt. to hide smelt. <laughs> There you have it. Don't invite Stephanie Izard to a meal and serve smelt, people. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> you have so many exciting things going on. Aside from the cookbook, which I'm going to be cooking from all summer Fantastic. long. Fantastic. Um, you've got Duck Duck Goat, which I can't wait to come to. You won Iron Chef, which <laughs> makes you the biggest badass in the world, in my opinion. <laughs> I just can't wait to follow along. I'm so happy we got to hang today. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so many different projects in the works, but I think my favorite thing is just standing on this bridge enjoying Austin, and we'll see. Maybe my career will bring me to Austin sometime, which would be fantastic. Yay, come back soon. Gathering Grays, it's what Stephanie's really all about. And I feel like every single recipe in the book is all about bringing people together and using food as a means to connect them. I definitely would really like an invitation to all of her parties at home, so just a hint. 